Hey, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. Today, we're gonna be in our master bathroom. To kick it off, we're gonna do the bathtub section. What we're gonna do is we're gonna demo all this, bring this all down to the ground, and then do a, like a floating soaker tub. So, let's have some fun here and kick it off with a little bit of wrecking day. Glad I'm wearing glasses. Whew, that was uh, a lot harder than I thought it would be. We got a blank canvas here. We see where our plumbing is. We have our drain, overflow drain. Um, obviously, it's gonna have to be moved towards the middle here. Yeah, we have the water lines here. So we're gonna have to make a little box over this to hide it and all that jazz. By the way, we have Wrecking Day merch. There'll be a link right here. Come grab it, support the channel. Look cool. Up next, we got the demoing of the tile here. Fortunately, we've demoed floor tile in this house before, and they use mastic, which you're supposed to use thin set for flooring, but they use the same stuff you use for backsplash. The fortunate part for us is it comes off way too easy. As you can see all the grout lines, which these are appropriate grout lines. Now here, this is an almost bare clean piece of tile. The reason why is because they didn't back butter it. You're supposed to back butter your tile to uh, cover all these little holes, and then that way you have two sides that are getting contact with the uh, thin set or whatever you're using. Okay, so now that we got all the tile removed, we gotta get rid of this mastic that's there. Uh, you can rent yourself one of those like helical grinders, which I went, my flooring video that was like, last summer. Uh, I did, I rented it, but it's it's a big machine and it's gonna be in the way here. It's kind of overkill. What you can do is pick up a scraper like this. Um, I think I paid 30 bucks for it. Use your foot to push everything off and uh, you'll have better chances of getting the heavy stuff. We got the floor scraped. We're set on that. Let's start working on plumbing and rearranging all this stuff here. I'm gonna cut off these existing water lines. The water's already shut off with the main valve. I'm gonna plug them off, and then I'm gonna chomp this sucker off because we're gonna need to figure out the center where the new tub will go. Okay, so let's reposition. Let's say this cold water. This is going to the outdoor faucet. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it, pull it out, and basically make a connection going this way. This is gonna be its own little utility box. It's like cords underneath your computer desk. You know there's a perfect system, let's just figure it out what it is. This is PEX piping, blue is obviously cold, uh, red is hot. You're using half inch tubes, these are half inch crimping rings. Uh, you can use two methods. Uh, one is if you wanna use the old school way where you just use a crimper like this. You put the ring over uh, the pipe and then you press it down in the half inch spot until it stops and you release and that's a perfect clamp. Or if you're already invested in your Ryobi One Plus system, I have a pneumatic one right here, a battery powered one. I slide on the same way, I press the button and it will start activating the motor, closing the jaws down to the perfect pressure and then they will open the jaws and we can take it out easy peasy nothing to do about it. Very important that your cuts, that they're not angled like that. Eighth inch off the edge, take your jaws, open them, let the machine do its thing, press release, and boom. So I moved the majority of the uh, plumbing, the water lines coming in, now we're gonna do the drain and the water lines for the faucet here. So here's where we got. I made a little schematic here based off of the online orders of the bathtub that's gonna be here. This is where the drain's gonna be, this is where the faucet's gonna be, it's a gooseneck here. Existing drain is there, we're gonna excavate up to here, that's where the drain's gonna go, and then because here's my cold and here's my hot, I need to drop them down here, we're gonna make a straight shot to that. I don't have a jackhammer here, and there's kind of overkill, so I'm gonna use my SDS hammer drill, uh, create holes, and then I'll use a big heavy hammer and slug that sucker down, and then we'll start fitting in all the piping. Hey, but first let's talk about sponsors of today's video, Figure HELOC. If you've been following this channel for a long enough time, you know that we tackle these projects, we renovate these houses, and on top of it, we show the price breakdown, but sometimes, though you could do it yourself, the price, the budget, it becomes an issue. Now, if you've been a regular viewer of this channel, you know that we remodel our house room by room, and we, at the end, we do a price breakdown of what the budget costs. And sometimes, though we could do these projects, the budget becomes an issue. Whether it's remodeling the kitchen or transforming a media room or a bonus room, it all takes money, and we have a solution for you. As the value of our home increases, so does the equity increase with it. The average homeowner has about $153,000 of equity that you can get cash out to transform your house. 
And that's where figure HELOC comes in with rates as low as 3.25% APR, including all payments and discounts of origination fees, funding up to $300,000 could be available as few as five days. So you can start tackling those projects ASAP. I love the figure HELOC makes it incredibly easy to do. It's 100% online application and video notary and support is available in most locations. So here's what you're gonna do. Hit the link in the description and learn what figure home equity line of credit can do for you. This is gonna take forever. This is a short one. That's gonna be an extremely long one. I don't wanna do this. I'm gonna go rent a jackhammer. Sometimes I'm just getting a little impatient, so I need to whip out the bigger guns. This just happened in maybe in two minutes. Uh, I've also realized there's a quicker route, so I'm just gonna continue for another 12 inches to get to there, and I'll run the water lines this way alongside the drain. Thinking smart. Water lines are cleaned up, piggyback coming down here, going across here, and I'm gonna have them in a small circle right here. What we're gonna do next is start excavating all this out of here, connect my extension drain, and then make sure all the plumbing sits underneath, completely underneath the concrete. Uh, if it's in, gets caught in the, the strengthening process, it'll crack. So we wanna avoid that, start digging this out and cleaning it up. All right, let's start setting up the drain. We're gonna use our ABS adhesive applied on both the male and female parts of the connectors. Hold it for a count of four. Now it's important to note, what I'm doing with this drain is the same thing what I'm doing with the plumbing water here. I'm not adding anything new or subtracting anything away. I'm basically just repositioning in a different uh, positioning. So this is still two inch pipe. That's still a P-trap that's close to the drain. This is still reducing from four inches to an inch and a half, I'm sorry, from three inches to an inch and a half. Same old stuff, just getting relocated a different angle. Now, what am I gonna do next? Uh, I'm gonna put gravel back in here start mixing up cement and start covering the sucker up. I will leave a gap about this big around here and a gap around this big around the water. That way, if we need to make modifications, we can. Wiggle room would have to excavate, but man, does this look finally good. All right, guys, let's do some cement pouring. Hey, this is the next day. The concrete dried great and it's still curing. The mission for today is two things. I need to add uh, drywall here. We have to use the green stuff, which is like a mold uh, controlled resistant drywall. So we'll wrap this. And then I have to build a little box, a little utility box to cover this up and we'll wrap that with drywall as well. So in the meantime, let's start getting some clean cuts, rip some of the stuff off and put new sheets of drywall up. Get a straight edge, use just a little tiny uh, bit of uh, utility knife, a quick little score, Break it off, cut off the brown paper from the back, and we got ourselves a beautiful drywall cut. So <laughs> I have this much drywall left and I have this much drywall scraps left over from one four by eight sheet. And I, <laughs> that means I have to buy one big sheet just to finish this. Because I'm not gonna go to store right now and waste time. I'm gonna start building this little box. We're gonna use maybe plywood to build around it. Let's go in the garage and see what we can come up with to cover this thing. Here's our little box that's gonna cover up all the water lines we come up with. All right, let's start wrapping this thing with drywall as well. We can't use screws because I made the interior dimensions really tight. So we're gonna use flex glue. For I like that it grabs it really quickly. Put a liberal amount out. I lost a nozzle for it, but you know, it still works. Now that it's there, I'm gonna start using my cutters and start wrapping all of these with this bull nose, especially here, because this is the transition nose here. Uh, I'm gonna cut it with my cutters and then I'm gonna stick it on using 3M61 spray. This is specifically for uh, corner beads that are paper like that. So that is the first time I've ever tried to attempt a miter with these round corners, uh, not only two way, but also the third way here. So uh, it looks like dog crap right now. I'll be honest, but you know, at least we tried. We tried, we failed, we're okay with it. Uh, I'm comfortable with this right now because mud can blend everything out. And speaking of mud, let's start taping up all of these seams.
When it comes to mudding, this is your first time. Once you mix it up into kind of like a sour cream consistency and you have your drywall tape and your taping knife, what you're gonna do is find your seam, get a good amount on there, take your tape, rip off the desired amount, bridge the seams, use your taping knife, press it in while squeezing everything else out, not too hard, and anything else comes out on top, just put it on over the tape to get a better stickiness. And when it comes to corners, take that same tape and you'll see a little bit of a crease down the middle. Just fold it exactly how you need it, lay it down and press it in the same way. The tape is all dry. The next step is gonna to be to lightly sand it. I'm using 120. And then we have two more stages of floating the tape. Uh, we're gonna use like a six inch uh, drywall knife and then I believe a nine or 10 inch. And then after that, we'll do the texture. orange peel, because I currently have orange peel, so we're gonna set it on medium. We've shaken this vigorously as a can says, and then according to this, hold it one to two feet away in a circular pattern. My experience with this is when you put too much, it gunks down. So we're gonna go try to go on the little light side and then add as it dries. I'm not gonna do this wall because last night I had a little inspiration that came to me. I think what I'm gonna do is remove all this trim and make this really wide uh, wainscoting kind of built-in trim part, a little bit more grand, a little Victorian style. So uh, we'll do that tomorrow, but today let's do tile. I wish I only had to just tile where the tub was and that front part, but in order to make it flow, I have to go further back. This is the, what do they call it, a water closet? The poop room. Uh, I need to start from there. So I'm gonna start laying down my tile, and once I get to about here, which makes sense to talk about the tub, I'll start showing you exactly how I'm laying this. At least explain it. This is the large format tile, uh, and there's a little checklist of what it could actually go on top of. So in our situation, concrete, we got a green light to go. Put some water in here, mix it up to a consistency of like sour cream. Now make sure you rinse out your mixing paddle here, because trust me, that thing gunks up real fast. Let's talk about installing tile. I've covered it a lot of times, but I want to refresh everybody who's maybe new to the channel. So um, first things first, we're using thin set. There's certain thin set appropriate for certain kind of material applications and certain tiles. This is porcelain. It's going on concrete floors. This is the product that we're using. We're going to mix it up to about a sour cream base. Because this is a large format tile, we're using half inch grates on this. We're going to apply it to our floor, and then we're going to get a nice, flowing pattern, beautiful. Then we're gonna take our tile and we're gonna back butter it. This will keep it from falling out or coming off. Scrape everything off now that it's there. Then we're gonna use our leveling system. I bought this, I believe it's called Marsh Town. You install these lifters everywhere. There's gonna be a joint, so two here, two there, perfectly. Then we're gonna flip the sucker over, carefully lay it down in place. Give it a nice little wiggle so all those little grates collapse. Then we're gonna take the caps and we're gonna just thread them on until two surfaces are completely flat. And just like that, we have properly installed a piece of tile that's leveled and we can continue with our pattern. All right guys, we're out here. We're getting through it, we're getting it done. I'm cutting the tile using a diamond blade on my uh, cordless uh, Rayobi angle grinder. It's going real good, getting tired. Speaking of which, get it done, new merch. Go check it out. Get yourself through all these projects. The link will be in the description. Help support the channel. Folks, I'm not gonna lie, I'm exhausted. I spent about seven hours tiling everything last night. Everything's dry and here's the fun part of how to break these levels off. Make sure this arrow is pointed uh, away from you, going straight line, and then just kick it. Just like that, let's kick on. Now let's start cleaning up all these grout lines and get this thing ready for grout. All right, grout time. Uh, this bag of grout has actually lasted me through like four or five projects. Gonna mix it up in here. We'll use this squeegee to apply, push it in the grout, dry for about 15, 30 minutes, and we'll start washing it off in three different phases and then let it sit overnight.
Now that the tile flooring is done, we can start moving and trimming out these windows. Now, before you saw there were these little tiny thin strips, uh, a dated kind of trim. I wanna beef it up. I actually wanna elongate this, make it look more grand. How I'm gonna do it? I'm gonna use a one by four inch MDF around it, on the sides at least, and then on top and the bottom, I'm gonna put these big fat stacks that I'm gonna put together and I'll show you how. All right, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm stacking uh, these trim pieces. This is a one by two, and this is a one by two. Put it on its side, and it sandwiches together a one by five, creating this elongated, girthy look. I got one on top, one on the bottom. This is gonna stretch these windows. It's gonna look so cool. Trim and baseboards are up. I need to wood fill these bride nail holes, caulk the inside of all these seams so it's all flawless and together, and then we'll start painting the sucker. It's faucet time. So this is a faucet we ordered on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description so you guys check it out. This is a standing one. Fun fact, they're pricey. Like even the cheap ones on Amazon's are really expensive. So if you're gonna tackle this project, know that. And this is a mounting bracket. Now, this is gonna go into the ground, anchored in, whether you have concrete floors or, or, or OSB. And then this part screws into this. And the water lines, which are here, these are half inch uh, water lines, they will run through here, attaching to the pecs coming out of the ground. So I'll connect my pecs, screw these in, attach these, anchor this into the concrete, and then we'll connect the rest of the faucet. So there's a problem. Uh, the way this faucet is set up that when you connect your water lines, you have to be able to push the water lines into the ground so you could sit flush right here. This is a concrete slab and I can't have a hole with the anchors there while having a hole in the bottom because I can't get my, fix, my pecs clamp in there. It's so frustrating. So my thought process here is I created elbows and having at the corner. So what I'm gonna have is these connections tied around each other, uh, that'll give me space, and then this flange will cover it and secure it. Um, again, not perfect, but definitely workable. My only concern is this little pinch off there. It's just slightly, uh, I'm assuming it's gonna decrease the flow, but we'll find that out when we fire this thing up. If the flow is weak, then we'll have to figure out how to solve this problem. Here's our tub. We got it from Impava Appliances. They're nice enough to send it to us to use this on this project. It is their 1518 model. It's 59 inches. It's got this cool vessel style. Uh, here's our drain there. These are our levels. We have to level them flush with the floor. Make sure the, the drain is level. We will loosen up just a little bit. And then once we make a contact point with a thread below, we'll screw it in with our special tool. Now that the tub is on, I'm gonna use FlexShot to create a waterproofing seal around this. Therefore, when you spill out here, none of the water will seep underneath it. Once that's done, I will close that drain, fill the water up about two inches deep, and I'll make a little dash mark with a pencil that I can erase later and watch the water about 24 hours to make sure there's no leakage. That's a good leak test to prevent yourself from having headaches later. So water's back on. This is the very first time we're turning this thing on. Let's see. That's a good flow. That's not interfering with the whatever's pinching off there. That's a great flow. Hey oh, <laughs> it actually works. Let's do the flood test.
Let's talk about the budget for this project. The tile was $468. All the plumbing supplies was $155. To do all the trim, it was $138. The drywall work was $60. The paint was $40. The faucet was $370. Now, making this grand total of $1,231, and that's without the tub. The tub was $1,107. Making this grand total for you to do it would be $2,338. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. It means the world to me. And if you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted every time we put one of these videos out. And in the meantime, go check out some of my older videos where you'll see a lot of really cool builds. Be sure to connect with me on my social media. All the links will be down in the description below as well as the merch section. Go grab yourself the brand new Mr. Build It merch, Wrecking Day. It is awesome, they fit great. We have an extended line of merch, help support the channel, and speaking of support the channel, check out the Patreon account where we have hour long extended footage of these projects that we couldn't fit into like a 20 minute video. So tune out this week, see you guys on the next one, bye. Here's a little mud trick that I wish somebody told me for the longest time. So the nice thing is with these caps, uh, this is probably the second time using them. Absolutely perfect, perfectly centered. The tub is gonna have probably no issues installing, fingers crossed.